Hey, it's Nate here and welcome back to Guitar Foundations. This is the video, this is the lesson where everything is going to come together for the perfect storm. And you're gonna see why you've been working so hard on your technique, your chords, um, strumming, learning songs, the little bit of music theory went on over, we went over in the last lesson, uh, because we're gonna talk about how major keys work and why certain chords sound good together. That's gonna help you be able to figure out songs a lot faster for yourself and even make up your own songs too. Now, if you missed something so far in the series on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. Uh, that'll help you stay on top of all the videos that are coming out for this series and it'll help spread the word about the series too to anybody who wants to get involved and start learning guitar as well. So far, as you've been learning songs and going through exercises and things like that, you may it may seem like things are just kind of randomly thrown together and you may be wondering to yourself, well, how in the world do I know what chords to put together? How do I know what chords sound good? Like the last song that you learned. How do those chords sound good together? Or why do they sound good together? And how do you know which ones to put together to make something sound cool? Well, that's exactly what we're going to go over in this lesson. I'm going to teach you a simple formula to know what a good starting point is using the major skills that we built in the last lesson so you can start putting chords together. And you can start figuring out what key a song is in just by looking at a chord chart. Or you can make stuff up with your friend as they sing just by playing some simple chords. It's going to be really cool. Like I said, there's a simple formula that you need to know. Um, I'll say it really quickly and then we'll break it apart. It's called one, four, five, two, three, six, seven. And like those are just random numbers, Nate, what the heck? Well, think back to the major scales that we built in the last lesson. Uh, let's go with the key of C major for an example. We had a C for the one, a D for the two, an E for the three, an F for the four, a G for a five, A for a six, B for a seven, and then back to our octave, back to the one C. Now, you might be able to see where this is going, but we're going to break this down and make it super simple. Um, it's really good to have the major key or major scale cheat sheet up in front of you from the Guitar Foundations ebook if you have that. If you don't, you can go to nasavage.com and pick that up, or you can just check out the graphics. They'll be up here on the screen for you, too. The idea here is that if you want to have a major chord sound, if you want to play a major chord in a particular major key, all you have to think about is one, four, and five, so the first, fourth, and fifth notes out of that major scale. If you look at a C major scale, the first, fourth, and fifth notes are C, F and G. So those are gonna be your basic foundational options for major chords in the key of C major. Those aren't the only major chords that you can use, but they're really good starting points. So one, four, and five, C is one, D, E, F is four, G is five. So C, F, and G are your foundational major chords in the key of C major. They sound great together, right? You can put them in any order you want. So if you write out the C major scale, just the numbers and the letters, one C, two D, all the way, E, F, G, A, B, C, numbered out, it's gonna look like this. And here is some uh, kind of shorthand or nomenclature for being a musician. An uppercase M next to a chord will generally mean that it's gonna be a major chord. So we're gonna pop up some uppercase Ms next to the C, F, and G here just to just to symbolize that those are major chords that go with that. And this is the same for every key. If you look at your major key cheat sheet, all the ones, fours, and fives for each key have uppercase M's next to them to signify major chords. All right, the next little part of our formula to find out what chords occur naturally in any major key is one, four, five, two, three, six, and seven. The second chunk there is two, three, and six. And the second, third, and sixth notes of any major scale have minor chords that go along with them. So if we go back to our example of C major, C, D, two, E, three, F, four, G, five, A, six, B, seven, back to C. What were your second, third, and sixth notes? It was D for two, E for three, and A for six. So those are gonna be the minor chords that you can use in the key of C major, and they were guaranteed to sound great, so let's do that. Uh, C major, what's the second? Second one, right? D minor. What's the third one? E minor. What's number six? A minor, right? 
can make a song out of just that, just putting random numbers together. But the important thing here is that you just remember that two, three, and six, the second, third, and sixth scale degrees of any major scale have minor chords that naturally occur that can go with them. And with this in mind, you have six chords you can play out of that C major scale or the key of C major. They go together. Pick any number. So one, C. What's five? G major, right? What's six? It's gonna be an A minor. Uh, what's three? It's an E minor, so. What's four? F. And I want to go back to a G, a five. And back to a one, a C. So I know that's a lot of information, but all you have to really remember is one, four, five major, two, three, and six minor and to help you out with this even more pull up that major skill cheat sheet or major key cheat sheet and now you have a giant overview of every chord that occurs naturally in any given major key and there are a couple of pieces of information I need to throw at you still just to make this uh, picture kind of complete um, so if you have the C major scale here it is and then you put in the uppercase M's on the one four and five you could put lowercase M's on the two, three, and six, lowercase m's generally represent minor chords. We're just talking about musical shorthand. So that's six out of the seven chords of any major scale. They're on the major scale cheat sheet for you. And let's go ahead and talk a little bit about um, the seventh scale degree too. It's a bit of an oddball. It's called a diminished chord, and it only occurs naturally anyways on the seventh scale degree. So what's the seventh scale degree of um, the key of C major? C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So we need a B diminished, don't worry about where this chord comes from now, just I'll play it for you. And you hear how it kind of, it wants to pull to that C major and kind of resolve. And when you see a diminished chord on a piece of sheet music or on a chord chart, it's just going to be the letter B in this case, with a degree signed for it to signify that it should be diminished. All right, let's go through another major key, the key of G major. So if you have your G major scale that we went over earlier, G. 2 is A, 3 is B, 4 is C, 5 is D, 6 is E, 7 is F sharp, and back to a G for the 8 or the octave. Apply the exact same formula. 1, 4, and 5 will be major. So look at your major scale cheat sheet or just write out the major scale and look at 1, 4, and 5. G major for the 1, C major for the 4, D major for the 5. Those are your basic major options in the key of G major. You can slap some uppercase M's next to them, just to remind you that they're going to be major. And then move on to the minor chords. What's the second, third, and sixth scale degrees in the key of G major, or for the G major scale? It'd be an A, so A minor for the two. A B, or B minor for the three. And six would be an E, so you'd have an E minor. And then you could have an F diminished as well. Sorry, F sharp diminished. That's really important. If um, there's a sharp next to a note, be sure to be specific and include it. Otherwise, it's wrong. And F diminished would be that. F sharp diminished would be that. Don't worry about the voicing for now. That's just the tip. Make sure to set your sharps and flats. It'll, um, it'll help you out. So, 1, 4, and 5. G, C, D for major chords. 2, 3, and 6. A minor for your minor chords. B minor and E minor. And hopefully you're starting to see how just knowing this little bit of information, 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, and 6, can really help you see why certain chords sound good together and why songs sound good together, chord progressions in songs, like the song you learned a while back. G, D, E minor, C, G, D, C. If you look at those chords, you know we're in the key of G major, and you can tell what chords you're playing right out of the scale. So a G is a one, a D is a five, an E minor is the six, minor, right? And then a C is the four, a major chord, and that fits in perfectly. It's a perfect example for this. So if somebody yells you a one, four, five, six progression in the key of G, instead of looking like deer in the headlights, you can say, okay, right out G major scale, one, four, five, six, one, G major, four, 
C major. Five, D, five, D major. And you know that because one, four, and five have major chords that go with them. And six has a minor chord that goes with it. And it's an E, so an E minor. So it's really handy for a lot of different situations, jamming with friends, figuring out uh, chord charts, listening to a song just by knowing what key it's in and being able to figure it out by ear or what your basic options are, at least for starting. All right, one more key. Let's do a D major scale. D is one. E is two. F sharp is three. G is four. A is five. B is six. C sharp is seven and you're back to D. Just fill in for your one, four, and five. What are those gonna be? They're gonna be major chords, right? So D is one. What's the four chord or the fourth scale degree? It's gonna be a G major. And what's the fifth scale degree? It's an A, so that's gonna be major as well. So if you wanna play a major chord progression in the key of D, those are your basic options. Put them in any order you want to. You're not limited by anything. Those are your basic options. You can get more creative down the road. That's fine. But this is a great place to start. What are the minor chords? So two, three, and six. So E minor is two. D, E. F sharp is three. So F sharp minor. And then B minor is six. So this is your options. When you're playing in the key of D major, I'm just gonna put random chords out of the key of D major together. So. I'm sure you've heard progressions like that in all kind of pop music, but you're only limited by your creativity and you know what you want to hear as soon as you know your basic options. And from there, you can learn new things about theory and music and kind of sprinkle them in as you go. But when you have this foundational thing down, uh, learning songs and playing with other people, it's gonna be a lot easier for you. All right, pull up your major key cheat sheet, and I just want you to look at it and observe. Just pick any key you want. It could be, um, let's do E major, for example. Just look at that. Find the one that starts with an E on the side, that's one, and then just look at what chords are in the key of E major. And you can play them on your guitar if you want to. You can study them, try to memorize the one, four, and five. You can do the same thing. Pick a different key, uh, the key of F major. What are the one, four, and five in the key of F major? That would be F, B flat major, and C major. So this has everything you need to get a really good kind of overview or big picture glance of all the chords in any major key that you want. All right, the last little tidbit for music theory that I wanna go over with you is just a really quick overview of how major and minor chords are made. I'm gonna keep this really simple, don't wanna complicate it at all. All you have to do to build any major chord that you want is circle the first, third, and fifth notes of any major corresponding scale. Uh, so pull up your major scale cheat sheet or major key cheat sheet real quick. Uh, pick any key that you want. Let's go with uh, a C just to make things easy to start out with. Look at the key of C there and just circle the first, third, and fifth notes. And what you're gonna do is you end up building a C major scale. That's what I mean by the pick the corresponding scale. So if you wanna build a C major chord, pick a C major scale. If you wanna build an F major chord, pick an F major scale. So pick the uh, C major scale there and just circle or write down the first, third, and fifth notes. So those are the notes in a C major chord. C, E, and G, one, three, and five. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, Nate, there are more than three notes in this chord, right? There's five. We're just doubling up on some of the notes. There are two C's, two E's, one G. So that gives us our five notes in a C major chord, in this particular voicing for C major chord, but there are only three notes one, three, and five, C, E, and G. Let's do another chord, keep it really simple. Just pull up your major key cheat sheet. Uh, let's do a G major chord. Look at the G major scale. Circle the one, three, and the five. Not one, four, and five, those are the major chords in a major key. What we're talking about here is building the notes in a G major chord, so one, three, and five. Just make sure to make that distinction when you're doing this. So those notes are gonna be G, B, and D, or G, one, B, three, and D5. And again, there are six notes in this chord. We're just doubling up on some of them. So you have G here, a G here, a G here, 
a B here, a B here, and a D here. And one more just for fun. To build a major chord from any major scale, just go to that major scale and circle one, three, and five. Let's do D major. Look at the D major scale on the major key cheat sheet. Just circle one, three, and five. What are those notes? D, F sharp, and A, right? Those are the notes in a D major chord. I want to take things one little step further and show you how to build minor chords. Just a basic way for building minor chords so you have a fairly good understanding of that. And we're going to keep it really simple again. Uh, let's start with an E major chord. We're going to build an E major chord and then turn it into a minor chord. Just so you can see the whole process. Keep things really simple. Do the exact same thing we did earlier. Look at your major scale cheat sheet. Find the key of E major. To build an E major chord, just circle the 1, 3, and the 5. And you're going to end up with the notes E, G sharp, and B. So nothing new here, just the first, third, and fifth notes of the E major scale to give us our notes in our E major chord, E, G sharp, and B. Now, here is how you make a minor chord. If you already have the major chord to start with, all you have to do is take the third note, one, three, and five, the third middle note, in this case it's a G sharp, and lower that third by one half step. Since it's a G sharp, all you have to do is lower that G sharp, down to a G natural. And this is a really good visual with the E minor chord. Our G sharp or our third of the chord is right here with our index finger. And if you think about how you make an E minor chord, all you do is take this index finger off to turn it into a minor chord, right? That's all we're doing, we're taking that third. This is the only third in this chord. There's only one instance of a G sharp. So when you lower that G sharp to a G natural, it becomes a minor chord. That's the way you turn any major chord into a minor chord, just lower the third of the chord by one half step. Let's do the same thing with a G major chord. Uh, pull up your major scale cheat sheet, look at a G major scale. Circle the first, third, and fifth notes to create a G major chord. The notes you have there are G, B, and D. If you wanted to turn that into a minor chord, all you have to do is lower the third, that B, by one half step. Since you have G, B, and D for your major chord, all you have to do is bring that B down to a B flat in order to make a G minor. So it goes from a G major, G, B, and D, to a G minor, G, B flat, D. So there's gonna be a lot of opportunity in the future for you to practice building skills, memorizing what chords occur naturally in keys, practice spelling major and minor chords, diminished chords, augmented chords, all these things. But the important thing for this course is that you just understand the basics of how major keys work. From here you can go on and choose to study more about music theory if you want to, or you can just stick with this and use this as a foundation to go out there and learn all sorts of cool different songs and experiment with different major keys and see what you can come up with on your own. Here are your assignments for this lesson. Number one, memorize the 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6, and 7 formula for the major, minor, and diminished chords in any major key. Number two, write out the chords in the key of C major five times. Number three, and this is a little uh, kind of throwing you to the sharks here, play a one, five, six, four progression in the key of C on your guitar. Number four, write out the chords in the key of G major five times. Number five, play through a one, five, six, four progression in the key of G major on your guitar. Number six, write out the chords in the key of D major five times. Number seven, play through a one, five, six, four progression in the key of D. Number eight, practice spelling your C, G, and D major chords using your major scale cheat sheet. Number nine, practice spelling your C, G, and D minor chords. I know there's a lot more to learn about music theory in the future, and you might be a little bit overwhelmed if you start researching and thinking a lot about that. But for now, just concentrate on the fundamental things we covered in the last video and in this one. And they will get you a long way if you put in the time, you know, getting really familiar with how keys work and memorizing your major keys and what chords occur naturally in them. It will take you a really long way. If you need any help with any of this stuff, you can always leave a comment here below on this page, or you can email me nate at natesavage.com. Now, if you're having really serious trouble with any of these individual areas, you can always go to natesavages.com and schedule a private lesson with me. The first one is complimentary, so there's no risk. Make sure to go ahead and go buy natesavages.com to sign up for email notifications for when a new lesson comes out, when something new is happening there. And I will see you in the next lesson.